Hey Seven, welcome to part two. Um, shouldn't take us too long. We're just going to be blending our animals together, and that's what we'll be looking for. We'll be looking for a believable uh, animal. So it looks instead of two animals, and instead of that hard line there and some different sort of colours and tones, we want to look make it look like it's a real um, animal that's half elephant and half rhino. Okay, so you would have remembered from the last tutorial that we created masks. Now I'm going to show you what masks do. This here is the mask layer, and this here is the image layer. So you can click between the two. Okay, so I'm going to put it on the mask layer. I'm going to show you what it does. So we're going to be using the eraser tool to erase some of the rhino and in order to blend them together. So the eraser tool lives down here. Remember, if it's hidden, you can see that little triangle it means that there's tools underneath here. Now you'll be able to access your Photoshop um, how-to manual and you should have a, a list of tools there. So eraser tool. Right. Now I'm just going to set this eraser tool. Now, like any tool down here, it has its own properties. So if I just go through different tools, you can see the properties bar up here is changing. So I'm just going to change the size of my eraser just to show you the different sizes right i'm going to have it about probably about yeah that, that size is good for now right so now you'll notice there's white and black down here now I'll show you what white does white deletes you can see i'm deleting 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 and you can see it's quite a hard edge on that deletion so it looks like there's spots there now watch what happens when I change to black. Just take note of this over here. See some little spots over here. When I change to black, to do that, you press this little arrow. You can see by it's changing from white to black. When it changes to black and I click over those spots, it's actually putting my animal back. So you can see um, how this is a safe way to do it because if you delete it, you can always put it back. That's on top of, of course, using our history panel here that you can see I've done a lot in our history panel. Okay, but it only goes back so far, so do be cautious. Okay, now if I'm gonna try and do a nice blend here, I'm gonna change it back to white. That's not a nice blend. You can see they're very, very hard edges and it deletes 100%. So what we wanna do is make it soft, uh, soft edge and delete very gradually. So I'm just gonna put those back, put that back and start again. Right, go back to white. Right. What we want to do, see the hardness is 100%. If I change that down, you should know this already, hopefully. You can see it's a nice soft control V. It's a nice soft edge. Okay, so we want to turn the hardness all the way down to zero. So it's really the softest brush we can get. And now these two settings here, opacity and flow, that changes how hard the rubber works. So we want to do it nice and gradually. So I probably recommend setting it to around 20% flow. You can have a little play around with this. If it's taking you too long and you're finding you have to click and click and click too many times, uh, you can always turn that up. So I might make my brush a little bit bigger. A little bit bigger. Okay, now I'm going to start clicking. We can see that's not working because it's on black. We want to take away. So we want to rub away, so we're going to use white. Now you can see it's working. I don't know if you can hear me clicking this many times. But it's very, very gradual. And what we want to do is get rid of those hard lines. And what I really recommend you do is zoom in. I'm going to show you the shortcut to zoom in. I'm using a mouse. If you hold down Alt and you scroll your mouse wheel, you can zoom in. Okay. If you're using the keyboard, I forgot the shortcut, so I'll come back to that. Okay. I'm just going to click, 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 and you can see I'm starting to get a really nice blend. Okay, I might zoom in a little bit further, see what I'm doing. I want to get rid of those hard lines there. And there'll be times where you need a smaller brush, there'll be times you need a bigger brush. Now what you can see that I've done there, I, I actually deleted too far in there. So you can see I've started deleting and it's gone transparent behind it. So I'm going to get my black and I might turn my brush a bit smaller and I'm going to bring some of that back because we don't, we don't want to have our rhino being see-through. 
Okay, so you can see it was now time for a bit of a smaller brush. Right, turn back to white because that is going to take away. I think I might turn these up a little bit. I might set them to 30 and 30. Ish. Okay. All right, now we're starting to get rid of that line, which is great. We're going to do some colour adjustment um, very soon, so we start matching those tones. There we go, that's looking good. Uh, another trick, if you hold down shift, oh, sorry, spacebar, you'll see a little hand comes up and I'm using my mouse to move it around. So that's a nice way to, that's a nice way to work. Okay. Oh, too far, too far. Change it back to black. Okay, let's bring that back. Okay, you can see how handy those masks are. All right, that's looking, that's looking pretty good. I might just make, turn back to white, make it a bit of a bigger brush and see if I can get a nice blend. Okay. Oh, too far, too far. I might just use my history to show you how to get rid of that. So going back up in my history. Okay. That's looking pretty good. That's looking pretty good. So what we might do now, you can see on my mask there, actually, you can see whatever's black is what I've taken away from the image. Right. So I'm going to change the tones. Now, if we look at the tones, I'd say the elephant's a bit grayer and I'd think the... The rhino is a little bit redder. So I, I might just go up in here to image adjustments. Now, anywhere, anytime you want to change the color, the tone, brightness and contrast, how light or dark things are, it's always up in the image adjustments menu. Okay, so I'm going to go to, oh, we'll notice that they're gray. There's a good reason for that. It means I can't access them. It's because I'm still on my mask layer. Now, my mask layer only works in black and white. Anytime I want to adjust the color of an image, I need to make sure that I click on the actual image layer. So you'll notice image adjustments. You'll notice I can access them all now. I'm just going to try something. I'm going to go a hue saturation. I'm just going to turn the saturation down now. What what it does? If I turn it all the way down, saturation means how um, saturated it is with color. I mean, we don't want to do that. Um, it's a little bit surreal, isn't it? Um, if I bring it down, that's looking a little bit better, isn't it? It looks less red. It looks less red. So I'm happy with that. What Hugh will do is change the color. Look, we don't want to do that, do we? Um, the blue or the purple or anything like that. But you can have a little play. And what we're really trying to match that, I'm going to press OK for now. Right. Now, it looks like there's a little bit more brown in there. I'm going to see if I can match that. I'm going to go up to Image adjustments, color balance, and have a little play. This is where I can put a little bit more red, a little bit more blue, and it gives me a bit more control. I'm going to see if I can mix in a little bit of orange. So I'm going to put in a little bit of red. What colors make orange? And a little bit of yellow. Oh, now we're starting to match those browns there, which is really good. I'm going to press OK. Now I might just go back in and change the saturation on that. So you can have a little play around with that, but that's looking pretty good. That's looking pretty good. Right, let's say I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that anamorph. All we want to do is make it one image. Now, just in case we do want to go back, I always like to duplicate my layers and have them kept safe. So what I'm going to do is select my two layers. I'm going to hold down Shift in my Layers palette. You can see the two of them are selected. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go to duplicate layers there we go i'm going to press ok now you can see i've got copies of them i'm going to turn the copies off just in case we do want to go back and they're there for safekeeping all right with these two layers i'm going to select both again hold down shift right click and we're going to merge layers we're going to merge the layers you'll see what happens it becomes one layer let's rename it Let's get into good practice. We're going to call it Rhino Elephant. Press enter. Great. So let's zoom out and see what we got. We have our lovely Rhino and Elephant. Fantastic. Now we're going to put a little background in. Now I found one on the internet. 
Okay, I found one on the internet. Now, on a side note, I wanted to find large image and large image. So when you're searching images, go to tools and this will say size. I'm going to select large. Now I know it sounds really big, but 1600 times 1059 actually isn't isn't a huge image, but it's the, probably the biggest we're going to find on these internet sites. So I might use this particular image here. So where is it? So let's just find that one again. It was a good one. Where was it? Okay, and that nice big image. So we want something that's at least a thousand above is a good rule to have. Right click, open image in new tab. There's a lovely big image. Right click again, and I'm just going to go to copy image this time. I'm going to go to my background layer, edit, paste, and our image is in there. Now I know it's a little bit cheeky, we shouldn't do this, but in this case, we are going to control T and we're going to make it the size of our page. Press enter. We really shouldn't make um, images bigger than, than they are because it starts to lose quality, but this is a very big image, so that's okay that we're working at. Right, so we've got an image sitting behind it. Fantastic. Last little thing we're going to do is we're going to make a little baby rhino elephant. Let's say However, just say for example, your layer got inserted there. I'm sure you know how to do this, but we want to put our background behind or under our rhino elephant. Okay, I might make him a little bit smaller, Control T. Right, now I'm going to make a little one. So I'm going to duplicate um, that layer again. So we should know how to do that. Right click, duplicate layer. Press OK, and now we've got two of them. Let's move him across. I'm going to make him smaller, Control T. And why don't we just do one more? For those who are listening very carefully, I'll show you a trick way to duplicate. Instead of right clicking over here, if we just hold down Alt and hover over our image, you'll see the arrows change. And if I click and drag while holding down Alt, we have a rhino and two little twin elephants. Right, all done, well done if you got to the end there. We're just going to